Just think, just think of all the time we spent listening to people talk about the design of luxury hotels in the last two days, which is probably not one of the biggest problems you need to solve in this country, when we could have been listening to people like Kunle in the previous talk, who has real expertise for you, but he had about five minutes too. But we'll do it, we can do this. Um, let's do a quick introduction. My name's Justin McGurk, I'm the design critic of The Guardian. I used to be the editor of Icon, which is this magazine here. Uh, which I, I suppose it was a magazine about perpetuating the celebrity of designers in the early 2000s, and I tried to make it a magazine about issues. Um, now at The Guardian, I, write, I, I just use design as a lens to look at the world, really. So it could be current events. Here's an article about the riots we had in London last summer, using the topic of commodity fetishism uh, to explore people's motives, you know. Um, I'm currently the publishing director of the Strelka Institute in Moscow, which is a new school uh, founded by Ram Koolhaas, not founded by him, but with a curriculum designed by Ram Koolhaas uh, for architecture and design research. I'm designing the publishing program, and the plan with that is to create a platform for long-form writing about architecture and design, because we have a real problem of a discourse, especially in design, where there's nothing really... Uh, between a, a short magazine article and a long book. There's, there isn't enough of the kind of deep thinking uh, and, and kind of leisurely reading, frankly, for an audience like yourself who's interested in the topic to really engage with. So uh, we're launching this uh, platform of e-books which are, very short, are either very short books or longish articles, like articles you might find in The New Yorker, but we sell them individually, like you can buy a song on iTunes individually. It's very cheap, it's very accessible, uh, it's publishing for the digital age. And um, I'm gonna hand over to Patrick so he can tell you quickly who he is. Okay, oh, all right, good, thanks. So um, I'm the editor of Creative Review. Uh, that's what we look like as a printed magazine. We've been going for 30 years. These are our offices. They look like shit. Um, this is my desk. It's also a total mess. It's not what people expect. Um, we're here on Oxford Street. There you go. There you can find us. So we have a nice view of London buses. It's very cool. Um, this is what uh, the magazine looked like when we redesigned it. Here's mag the history of Creator Review in uh, four images. Starting top left, this was 1980, as you can tell from the picture of Flash Dance that's on the cover. Uh, that's one, another one of our covers, that's what it looks like inside. Our website is equally as important as a printed magazine now, if not more so. Um, it gives us global reach, we have a fantastic international audience, it lets us do all kinds of things we never could do in the past. There's even a section on the website where everybody in this room can upload their work and it gets seen by our entire readership. Twitter has become, again, a fantastically important channel for us. We have half a million followers on Twitter. I think you could do a magazine just on Twitter. You could also do a magazine just on Facebook if you wanted. This is our Facebook page. Anybody can set up and do that. This is going to be our iPad app. It's taken a year of blood, sweat, and tears. I hate Apple now, having deal dealt with them over this for the last year. Um, it's going to launch very soon, I hope. So there's all kinds of things that we do. The fact that digital media is in everyone's hands and is largely free means that anybody can set up and do a magazine if they like now. Um, I'm just going to show you really quickly tumblers. Go for it. We love tumblers. Tumblers are brilliant. Really, really simple to set up. I'm sure all of you know about tumblers. In the design space, there's loads and loads of stuff there that are really kind of playing the role that magazines used to play. So this is called But Does It Float? Daily shot of inspiration. Loads of images at a very sort of simple level, but really good. This is women laughing alone with salad. This is another tumbler. This is dedicated to the fact that women enjoy eating salad so much that when they have that bowl of salad in front of them, they just have to laugh because it's so fantastic. <laughs> Look at this lady. She's so thrilled. That cup that she's got there, that's actually filled with vodka. It's, and this lady is obviously, she's reached the point of no return. And that this is a, that led to another follow-up site called Women Struggling to Drink Water, which is actually a big problem in photo library land. This poor lady, she's terribly dehydrated because she just can't get that water into her mouth. Here's another one. Here's, oh look, this is a terrible, terrible worldwide problem. 
Here's another great tumbler. This is Kim Jong-il looking at things. This is still up even though the dear leader has since departed. Here he is looking at all the confiscated Coca-Cola in North Korea. Here he is looking at something that he has no idea what it is. And here he is wondering what happens if he pushes that button. Here's another great uh, tumbler. This is things organized neatly. This is obviously of great interest to designers who love to organize everything neatly. And this is something which is a bit more important. So this is uh, Design Observer. So this is an example of uh, what would have been in the past a printed magazine and is now a website, which is a bunch of very, very well-known American designers, thinkers, and writers coming together to create a publication which is free for everyone to look at and became a massive success. So they can do it in America. There's no reason why people in India can't do the same thing. Right, so we were going to talk a little bit about design in the media. Uh, we were going to talk about the role of the media and the image of designers in the public eye. In London, we have a problem with, uh, well, you think you have a problem with, with design not being seen as, you know, not being taken seriously enough. Just to reassure you, we have the same problem in London, in England, uh, where generally designers are seen as uh, people who charge too much for services that, you know, especially when it's public things like the Olympics, where it tends to be kind of a waste of taxpayers' money. Um, here's a Daily Mail headline saying that the, you know, people will be held account for the shambles of the logo, uh, which obviously cost 400,000 pounds and nobody liked it. Um, here's, here's Boris. Boris, uh, you talk about Boris. Okay, well, well um, politicians love them a bit of uh, design. It's a great thing that they think makes them look really cool. And recently there's a new bus being launched in London. And uh, Boris, was, who's the mayor of London, if you don't know, was just all over this thing because he loves to reflect and bask in the glory and pretend that he did it all himself. But, but the thing is, the thing about politicians and design in our country, I mean, people, there was a question earlier about what the government can do to kind of promote design here and to, and to build it as a discipline. Actually, you know, the UK government doesn't do anything really to promote design. Uh, lots of times politicians get on stages and they pay lip service to the creative economy, but they don't really help. There are no handouts. It's not, it doesn't really work that way. Um, here's a comment uh, about the bus that Boris uh, th this is a very much, you know, this is also how the public sees design. A lot of the time, the public sees design as a, as a kind of waste of money. Um, but the reason we're showing this is more because of the state of the discourse. Um, we are the first generation of journalists who have to face our readers within seconds of publishing our material. Here's a good one from an article I wrote about, um, can you read that? An article I wrote about, about the bus. I would suggest that the author has absolutely no idea about design and should never be invited back to write about the subject. Now, The Guardian is very proud of, its, um, of what it calls open journalism, which is um, a comments culture that invites readers to be part of the news to help make the news. And um, obviously the level of debate is incredibly thought-provoking and deep, and um, it can really kind of stimulate uh, cultural development, as you can see from this kind of... But um, it's not always like that. I mean, sometimes you know, people do have incredibly insightful comments, and it's absolutely worth it. For the 99% of junk like this, there's one comment that is absolutely worth publishing, you know? OK, so that's our presentation. I guess if we've got one thing that we'd like to leave you with, it's just that anybody can make a magazine now, and a magazine could be anything. You can create, write, distribute a magazine with nothing more than a mobile phone. And having talked to um, various people here, I understand that at the moment there is no magazine or publication or website for, specifically for designers in India. There's no, apart from Curious, which doesn't really come out very often, there's no place where India's design community can come together, talk to each other, show each other their work, uh, get a job, tell people they're looking for a job, that graduates can post up their degree show work. But there's a lady here in the audience who's going to fix that because we were talking about this at the tea break. Who has my friend from Shristi? Stand up. Okay, so this lady is going to create, well, with her students, so she's going to set this as a project with the students at Shristi to create India's design community website that is going to do all of those things to the design community and bring everyone together because it's great that AD has come to India and that's very nice, but you don't need AD's permission to bring your community together. You can do it yourselves. You have the tools to do it. 
and this lady is going to spearhead that. And next time we have an India Design Forum, you can stand up and show the fantastic community website that your students have built. That's your challenge for the year. And I just want to add to that that you know, it's not about the, the discourse you need here is not necessarily about the ADs of this world. You have to remember that a, you, to, to AD and to Condé Nast, you're just a market. You know, that's, if you're going to talk about what design media is for and what design critics are for, it's about setting the level of debate that you want to have. And you are all here because you're interested in what design can do for your country as, as a piece of nation building. Um, and it's not about looking at rich people's homes in magazines, you know. And, and the reason why um, that lady over there is probably more inspired to set up a magazine is to look at the kind of work that's going to have real social re relevance and benefit for this country. And um, that is something that, you know, no one's going to come here and set up a magazine to talk to you about that for, because, you know, the market's limited. But um, I'm being told time out. Yeah, we're, we're out of here. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.